seem to be working finally. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so it's great to be here. Um, definitely enjoying the conference so far. And uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about NotPy. That's a relatively new uh, sampling library for Span and PyMC models. Um, and I think by now it's stable enough for people to actually use it. Um, but before I kind of go into the details of what it is and uh, how to use it and what it does differently, um, I think I need to explain it just a little bit about why I would do something so silly as to write a new sampler library from scratch. Um, so I, um, I'm one of the PyMC core developers and I've been working on the PyMC sampler itself for, for quite a couple of years now. Um, Currently, I work at PyMC Labs, where we also just run large models repeatedly. So having uh, a reliable sampler that's fast uh, is quite important to us. And uh, the PyMC sampler is nice. I don't want to say anything particularly bad about it, but it has aged a little bit, let's say, put it like that. So it does have quite a little bit of Python overhead. It's written in pure Python. So if you have a small model, then in many cases, it's uh, slower than it could be. Um, also, if you use Python, you might have come across the global interpreter lock in some ways. If you haven't, then uh, you're lucky. Uh, that's one of the things that can get in the way in Python in, for writing parallel things. And we need to do some work to work around that, and sometimes that, that causes problems. So to get rid of those first two, I decided, okay, let's, if, we, if we want to rewrite something, let's rewrite it in something else. So we went for, uh, for Rust. Uh, which interfaces quite nicely with uh, uh, with Python. So that's, uh, I, I think, a, a great combination, those two languages. Um, we also wanted it to support multiple computational backends, and that will come in handy quite soon with uh, Stan. Uh, so because PyMC now has multiple backends, like JAX, Py soon soonish PyTorch, uh, and, oh, and Number, um, that was important for us. Also, I've been looking into mass matrix adaptation since, I don't know, that was, I think one of the first contributions I ever did to PyMC was copying the Stan mass matrix adaptation back then and kind of reading through the Stan code for, for long hours on end uh, to copy that. And since then, I've kind of repeatedly worked a little bit on that uh, and trying to, uh, to make that faster. And I wanted to put those, those ideas into practice. Um, so, out of that, now we have this sampler which can sample PyMC models, and that was nice. Um, and at some point, Rich Stan came along, um, written by um, Edward Raldus, um, Bob and Brian, who are both here, I think. Um, and it allows you, it, it's been mentioned before, it uh, allows you to call the log p function, uh, the log gradient function of uh, Stan models. And since we already supported multiple backends, it was like, okay, why not, why not add that as well and be able to, to also sample stand models? Um, to get into the details a little bit, you don't need to know anything about this if you just want to use NatPy. So that's just a little bit about what, it, what it's doing different in the mass matrix adaptation specifically. So mass matrix adaptation is kind of, you can think of that um, as an auto-reparameterization. So if your uh, model samples, doesn't sample well, people often ask you to reparameterize, and kind of one of the, the important steps in writing a sampler is to do some of that automatically. So for instance, you have a parameter, you have two parameters, parameter one on the x-axis and parameter two on the y-axis, so just on the left plot here. And the posterior is much more narrow on the x-axis on, on one parameter than on the other parameter. So the Reparameterization that we are doing is just okay. Let's just rescale that so that both have the same the same standard deviation. And we do that. You could do that manually, which would be a pain to do for every model. So we do that automatically for you. Um, but there would there is another way of looking at that. So instead of saying we want kind of for the sampler to be happy, we want to have the draws to have the same scale. We can also always look at the gradients. So. Whenever you have a probability distribution, you can also look at the probability distribution of your gradient values. So how quickly does the log p change? And for that particular model on the left, that might look like, or that actually looks like on the, the, the one on the right. So there, the, it's very, very wide because kind of in the x-axis, the posterior is very narrow, so the values change very much, so the posterior standard deviation is very large. 
And equivalently, you could also argue that then maybe we want to rescale things so that the gradients are, look nice and have standard deviation one. Um, Stan actually just does the left, the one where it, uh, where it rescales the draws and doesn't care about the gradients. So that would be the left thing. And sometimes that works perfectly, but it tends to leave the gradients in some models with relatively large or very small values. NotPy tries to find a compromise between those. So sometimes it's not possible to kind of get the standard deviations to one in both cases. So it compromises between those two and tries to do both okay instead of kind of doing one grade and the other, not, not touching the other one it's, uh, at all. Um, there's also a more mathematical way of looking at that that I really, really like. I don't really have time to, to look into that much detail of this, but um, so you can, there, there's a generalization where you can say, okay, we want to find a transformation that minimizes a certain quantity. So this is kind of this, it looks a bit like a KL divergence, only it's focused on the gradients instead of uh, the log P value. So Fisher divergence. Um, and if, if you use the right, right norm in those cases, then this gives me kind of, if, if for all cases where I know what the answer should be, it gives me the right answers or what, what I think the right answers are. Um, so I'm kind of pretty excited about this and also kind of how it can be generalized maybe to, or to normalizing flows or something like that. Or if somebody were to write, I don't know, an SMC sampler or something um, where you also need to rescale things. So I, I think this, this might definitely be interesting. So this estimator has some nice properties. So for instance, it converges faster. So not just it converges to something else, but it converges faster. So because we have some additional information, we have the gradient information, um, we get re reasonable results with fewer draws. Um, if your posterior has really nice shape and it actually is a Gaussian with a diagonal distribution, for instance, it gives you the right answer, the exact right answer with no, no estimation error right away. Um, as I said, for cases where we do know what good mass matrices are, like multivariate normal distributions, it also has nice properties and it generalizes, as I said. NotPy also has an experimental low rank modified mass matrix adaptation, which uh, I'm really curious if people want, want to try that. That definitely is experimental, much more experimental than NotPy in general. Um, but that should be able to automatically also remove some correlations in a posterior if you have a relatively large model, not, not a gigantic model actually kind of in, in the number of parameters, then I think it does break down at some point. But it has much lower cost but than full mass matrix adaptation. So it's not no, no, no. It really it's is low rank? no, no. It, it, it is not low rank. I, I, I don't really have a good good name yet for it. It's it uh, kind of keeps some of the eigenvalues constant and just fixes some other eigenvalues. Right. So there is a low rank matrix in there, but um, but good question. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's kind of the goal of the eigenvalue eigenvalue adaptation to find this different eigenvalue. Uh, different mass matrix, sorry, not eigenvalue. Um, NotPy also changes a little bit about how the mass matrix is adapted during tuning. So, um, that's not where I wanted to go. Um, mass matrix adaptation is a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. We want to have a good mass matrix so that we can sample, but we need samples in order to find the mass matrix. So we don't really know where to start. So what we do is we start with some mass matrix, sample a bit, update the mass matrix, sample with something new, and so on. And that often is if you kind of sample stand models, I guess you can see sometimes that at the beginning it's really slow, and then it gets faster. And that's because in the beginning we have a bad mass matrix, and we are using very, very long trajectories to try and do something because we don't really know yet kind of how, how to deal with the posterior. Um, and in this animation, you can kind of see for each kind of the x arc axis is the draw that we are in, and the blue region is the highlighted one where kind of those draws that we are using to estimate the mass matrix that we are currently using. So right now we are at draw, I know, 500, and it's using the blue area kind of to estimate the mass matrix. And it, it's not, not, not exact, the, the, the numbers on the x axis and the window sizes don't really match or something like that, but just, just to give the, the general idea. And NotPy kind of updates that, especially at the beginning, much more quickly, which avoids this problem of really long trajectories early on. 
Um, we can see that in a couple of models. So for instance, this is just a pretty much random mo model, a bit cherry picked to be, to be fair. Um, one of those radon um, models where we just look at, okay, how many gradient evaluations do we need until we, oh, <laughs> until we end up at a nice bias? And for Stan, for instance, in that particular model, it's something like 10,000 gradient evaluations for NASPY, it's only 1,000, so a factor of 10 better. But um, we want to, I mean, that's just a single model, so uh, that also has come up a bit, little bit before kind of posterior DB, and I used that to compare sampler performance uh, of um, NASPY and Stan, just in terms of the number of effective samples it gives you per time. And if you look at the distribution of this, this looks like something like this. So this is across something like 100 different models. Um, this is a logarithmic plot on the, on the x-axis. So on the right side, NatPy is faster. On the left side, Stan is faster. And NatPy is faster on something like 85% of models with a mean, so geometric mean of the speed ups is uh, about two. And you can see that there are still quite a few models where it's uh, more than a factor of four faster. There also are a couple of models where it's lower, so uh, I guess that's just the way it is. If you want to use it, um, it's at the moment only usable from Python. There's no R interface, although if somebody were to uh, w wanted to add one, uh, I'd be uh, delighted and I would definitely be willing to help, but I don't really know the R world all that much, so I don't really feel like I would do a good job if I, if I did that myself. But from Python, it's just pip installable. You need to specify that you also want the optional stan dependencies because, well, uh, you just need bridge access to bridge stan. And as all stan things, it needs a C++ compiler. Um, you then import NatPy, provide your model code, either, either, either as a file or just as a string. Tell NatPy to compile it, which then actually calls uh, bridge stan internally. You give it your data set and you tell it to sample. And it will then return an RVs trace, which uh, kind of in the Python world is, is the default for handling, uh, handling traces and sampler statistics and plots and all of that. Uh, it does give you a nice progress bar, so uh, that's, that's always nice. So it tells you for each chain how far is the chain long, how many divergences were there. And I think that's pretty useful, how many gradients per draw did it use. So you can see, is your model slow because kind of it needs lots of gradient evaluations, or is your model slow because uh, the gradient of our evaluations are slow. That's, I think, often a nice thing to know. So do you need to fix the geometry or do you need to fix the computation, in a sense? Um, you can also sample in the background. So for instance, you can just say NatPy.sample blocking equals false, which will then not return your trace, but it will return your sampler object, which you can control, like you can pause it if, I don't know, if you want to do something else with your CPU for a while. Um, you can inspect the trace, so while it's sampling, you can tell it, give, give me the current trace that, that you have so far, so you can have a look if you have a 10-hour model run or something, you can, can have a look at what, what's actually happening at the moment, and you can just, okay, wait for the results for a particular time or in, in, indefinitely. Also, if you abort sampling, that's also nice, NatPy also always gives you the current trace, so just because you abort sampling, your progress is gone. Um, so any feedback or benchmarks as well actually are quite welcome. Uh, you can find me on Discourse or GitHub. I assume the stand developers don't mind if, if you use the stand discourse uh, or the PyMC discourse, both is, both is perfectly fine. Uh, I would really welcome it if you run into any bugs if you report those because unreported bugs can't be fixed. Um, and if you have any questions. So let, let's stick around for a few questions. Yeah. Um, in the posterior database, like the out of those models, especially the ones that were like much faster, was there any common So there's, I, I don't really know. So if, if the posterior is just very nice, there's usually not much difference between Stan and NatPy. That, that's something. Um, also, it's a little bit misleading that plot because kind of very, very fast models, they are much faster with NatPy. 
but that, that doesn't really change the overall picture too much. So even for slow models, it's definitely faster, I think, but that, that skews it. It's, it. it's more like 1.6 instead of 1.7 for, for reasonably slow models, to be honest. Uh, good question. I wish I knew. Um, kind of the for the really sl really small really small models, the higher speed ups they are implementation, I think. But um, the mass matrix adaptation changes, so how the windows are done, that definitely has a large impact. But the different mass matrix target also has an impact. So you can also set NatPy to use the normal uh, mass matrix adaptation. It still is faster, but that that definitely gets rid of some of the advantage. But it depends on the model. Maybe one, one last question. Uh, where is the last type of this information? You mentioned the last one. Yeah, so there are just two repositories. One is NatPy, one is NatsRS. And oh, um, NatsRS just contains the Rust code and could be wrapped using some R package if somebody wanted to do that. And NatsPy just contains the Python wrapper. So let's thank our speaker. And